How you doing, everybody? So I got a chance to see Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the latest movie directed by Tim Burton and starring Asa Butterfield, Eva Green, and Samuel L. Jackson. Asa plays a boy named Jake, whose grandfather Abe, played by Terence Stamp, has been telling him stories about an orphanage he used to live at in Wales. This orphanage was run by a woman named Miss Peregrine, played by Eva Green, and was home to many strange and, one might even say, peculiar children. They had an invisible boy, they had a girl who could set things on fire just by touching them, they had another girl who had to wear lead shoes all the time because if she didn't, she would float away, and so on. And everyone assures young Jake that his grandfather's stories are complete hogwash, as you would expect. But after Abe is killed under mysterious circumstances, Jake convinces his father to take him to Wales to pay a visit to the orphanage in an attempt to get some closure. But through a wacky turn of events, he suddenly finds himself transported back in time to 1943 and finds out this home for peculiar children is very real, and it exists in some kind of a time loop where they repeat the same day every day. And then things get very dark and twisted and weird because Tim Burton. This is very much a Tim Burton movie and has everything you would expect from him, except, oddly enough, for Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. Although I could very easily see Miss Carter playing Eva Green's character. This movie is Gorgeous to look at. It is shot incredibly well and everything just looks beautiful. The titular peculiar children all have some pretty varied and interesting gifts, if that's the right word for them. And there's a lot of dark and creepy shit in this movie as well. Samuel L. Jackson plays the villain of the movie and he has these monsters under his control that kind of resemble Jack Skellington if Jack Skellington was a monster in a Silent Hill game. And they have a pretty awesome battle at the end of the movie with these animated skeletons in a scene that kind of resembles Jason and the Argonauts. And Mr. Jackson himself is really fucking creepy and is clearly having the time of his life in this movie. He is having so much fun. I thought Eva Green did a very good job as Miss Peregrine, a character that is definitely a bit strict and values discipline, but is also very kind and very protective of her children. And this movie has a lot of very talented people. You got Terrence Stamp, Allison Janney, Judi Dench, Chris O'Dowd doing an American accent for some reason. Which, he did it well, it just, it's weird to hear that voice come out of his mouth. Unfortunately, the two main characters in the movie, played by Asa Butterfield and Ella Purnell, are not the most interesting. There's nothing really wrong with the performances, the actors did an okay job, they just didn't really have a lot to work with. And the movie has a tendency to get a bit confusing at times. For one thing, everything in this movie has these weird made-up names. Like, the governess that runs this orphanage for peculiar children. She has a title, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what it was, even though I just looked it up a minute ago, because it is such a weird and nonsensical word. I remember it had a lot of whys. And there are apparently several homes for peculiar children all around the world, and they all exist in these 24-hour time loops, which they have to reset every day. And if they don't, the loop kind of collapses in on itself and they're all flung into the present day and they immediately age in order to catch up to the present day, which means they all die. But then at the end of the movie, they somehow find a way to stay in 1943 and age normally because reasons. And apparently there is a way to travel between the various time loops without suddenly aging into the present and dying, but the way that it's done is not explained very well. And after a while, I just gave up on trying to make sense of all this. And the ending of this movie felt a bit rushed. It's like, oh shit, we've already hit the two hour mark and we got a lot more story to tell. What are we gonna do? Quick, to the montage mobile! So I did this thing and then I went and did this thing and then this thing and then this other thing and that thing and this one thing and oh, we're kissing, the end. A lot of things in this movie definitely needed more explanation and maybe if I had read the book, I would have understood what was going on a bit better. Maybe the book does a better job of explaining all this stuff, but I shouldn't have to read the book to understand the movie. I have to judge the movie on its own merits. And on its own, it is kind of a mess. But it is a beautiful mess, it's a very well acted mess, and dare I say it, it's even an entertaining mess. I would not say it's worth paying full price, but if you're okay with an entertaining mess from Tim Burton, I would say this is good for a matinee.
And that's all I got for Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So until next time, take care.